In this video, we're going to learn about conditional relative frequency tables. So here we're told that the two-way frequency table on the right shows the results of a survey in which students were asked which color they liked better, red or blue. In the table, rows show the grade levels of the students and columns represent the chosen colors. So our first task over here is we want to construct a conditional relative frequency table for columns to answer the following questions. First, what is the conditional relative frequency of students in first grade given that the student prefers red? And second, what is the conditional relative frequency of students in second grade given that the student prefers blue? Before we get into these questions, let's just go ahead and construct the table. And before we construct the table, let's talk about what does conditional relative frequency mean? Normally when you think of relative frequency, you think of survey results taken relative to the entire population. So for example, since the entire population is 100, the relative frequency of first graders who prefer red would be 10 out of 100, or 10%. But here we're interested in conditional relative frequency. In particular, for this exercise, we're interested in conditional relative frequency for columns. So when we think about what to fill in this top left corner with, we need to think what is the relative frequency of first graders who prefer red conditional on the fact that they're in this column. In other words, out of all of the 25 students in this column, what portion of those students are in first grade? That's the number that we want to fill in here. So we really just need to take that number 10 and divide it by the total number of students in the column. So 10 divided by 25. And the result of that is 0 0.4. We do the same thing for second grade. Take the number of students who are in second grade and prefer red and divide it by the total number of students in the second grade. So 15 divided by 25, which is 0 0.6. And then the total in that column is just one. 25 divided by 25 is one, and also 0 0.4 plus 0 0.6 is one, whichever way you wanna think about it. All right, so let's just go on to the next column, blue. The procedure will be the same. We're just dividing each entry of the column by the total of the column. So divide everything by 75. So the top entry will be 40 over 75, which is about 0 0.53. And then below that, we'll have 35 over 75, which is about 0 0.47. And then again, the total is one. We can move on to the total columns now. So 50 divided by 100. That's, that's a little bit easier to compute. That's just 0 0.5. And below that, we've also got 50. So 50 over 100 is 0 0.5, those sum to one. And now we can think about answering these questions. First of all, what is the conditional relative frequency of students in the first grade, given that a student prefers red? So given that a student prefers red, that means we're looking in the red column. So really we're asking what portion of the students in this red column are in first grade? And looking in the first grade row, we see that's just 0.4. On to the second question, what is the conditional relative frequency of students in the second grade, given that the student prefers blue? So we're really just asking, what is the proportion of students who prefer blue that are in the second grade? And so we just look at the second grade row in the blue column, 0 0.47. There we go. All right, moving on to the next exercise, construct a conditional relative frequency table for rows to answer the following questions. First of all, what is the conditional relative frequency of students who prefer red given that the student is in second grade? And second of all, what is the conditional relative frequency of students who prefer blue given that the student is in first grade? Again, let's not worry about these questions just yet. Let's just go ahead and construct the table. And a conditional relative frequency table for rows is very similar to a conditional relative frequency table for columns. The only difference is that instead of the column totals being one, the row totals should be one. So we're just dividing each row by its row total. So first entry will be 10 divided by 50, which is 0 0.2. Second entry in that row will be 40 divided by 50, which is 0 0.8. And indeed those add up to one. So this is working out well. Do the same thing for the second row, divide 15 by 50, 15 over 50, is equal to 0 0.3, and then divide 35 by 50. 35 over 50 is equal to 0 
Then we can divide the totals row by the sum 100. So 25 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.25. And then 75 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.75. So now that we've got our table, we can look at the questions again. First of all, what is the conditional relative frequency of students who prefer red, given that the student is in second grade? All right, so we're given that the student is in second grade. So we're asking out of all those students in second grade, in this row here, what's the portion who prefer red? Well, we see in our table that we've just constructed that that's 0 0.3. And then the second question, what is the conditional relative frequency of students who prefer blue, given that the student is in first grade? So given that the student is in first grade, so, so out of all those first grade students, what's the portion who prefer blue? That's right here in our table under the blue column, 0 0.8. All right, so looking back, these conditional relative frequency tables seemed kind of intimidating at the beginning, but it's really a lot simpler than it seems. To get a conditional relative frequency table for columns, you just divide each column by its column sum. And to get a conditional relative frequency table for rows, you just divide each row by its row sum. So with that in mind, let's move on. All right, next set of problems, we want to solve for the missing variables in each of the conditional relative frequency tables below. Our first table here compares group A and group B to option one and option two and we see that we're missing x, y, and z. Now, one thing that pops out to us immediately is that all of the row sums are one. So that tells us that this is a conditional relative frequency table for rows. So all of the rows have to sum to one. So this gives us several equations that we can use to solve for x, y, and z. First of all, x plus 0.75 equals 1. That means x is equal to 1 minus 0.75. So x is equal to 0 0.25. We can do a similar thing to find y and z. We've got for y, that's 0 0.2 plus y equals 1. So y equals 1 minus 0 0.2. So y equals 0 0.8. And then likewise for z, we have that 0 0.5 plus z equals 1. So z equals 1 minus 0 0.5. And that means z equals 0 0.5. All right, on to the next table. So in this next table, we've got group C and group D. And again, option 1 and 2. We've got percents in this table, and you can think about these just like decimals. 100% corresponds to a decimal of just one. And we see here that the columns are the ones adding to 100%. So this is a conditional relative frequency table for columns. So that means the columns all have to add to 100%. So right off the bat, we see that D has to be 100% because that's the sum of the column for option one. So D equals 100%. Let's actually write that into D equals 100%. And now that we know that, we can solve for A as well. Um, we know that A plus 15% has to equal 100%. So A equals 100% minus 15%, which means A is 85%. And we'll do a similar thing to solve for C and B. Solving for C, we have that 40% plus C equals 100%. So C equals 100% minus 40%. So C equals 60%. And then for B, we know that B plus 30% is equal to 100%. So B equals 100% minus 30%, which means B is 70%.
So now we know how to work with conditional relative frequency tables for rows and columns. And in the future, we'll continue to practice interpreting two-way tables.